from newstalkzb.co.nz. It's Mike Hosking. It has, as they say, been a while between drinks. Last time Missy Higgins was on this programme, she was on the rise, but then, well, she quit. She quit music altogether. Too much success, too much fame, too much touring, and it wasn't bringing the happiness she thought, so she walked and she went to university, but she's back. The new album is the old Razzle Dazzle. So what happened, eh? Missy Higgins is with us. Good to see you. Thank you. Yeah, it's good to see you too. What happened? Um, I'm not sure. I think I just uh, I burnt myself out a little bit. I um, I suddenly kind of found that I wasn't playing music for the right reasons, and it had just kind of become something automatic. And it wasn't uh, I don't know. It, I was I wasn't passionate about it anymore, and it, and it wasn't bringing me the happiness that it used to. So, yeah, I just decided to walk away and try to find happiness elsewhere you literally woke up one morning or it built over time or no it built over time when it came time for my third album um i i tried writing for it but i couldn't i just had this severe um writer's block and uh i tried and tried and tried and you know after about a year of trying and maybe writing one song i just thought why am i banging my head up against a wall like this is a sign that i should be doing something else and so you, you went to uni i went to uni yeah and i you know i did lots of other things but um yeah going to uni was something that I never did um out of high school it was kind of a rite of passage that I felt I'd missed out on so I wanted to give it a go did you tell people did you go hi mum or dad or manager or bank manager or whoever and go I'm quitting and I'm going to do something else or did it just um, evolve I did I sat my manager down and I said I'm I'm really sorry but I'm um, I'm afraid even if I did want to keep doing music, I don't have any songs. I, d I just can't write songs. So um, I have no choice but to kind of walk away and go and find something else to do with my life. And I really hope that I come back to music one day and I'm inspired. But um, all I can say for now is that I can't see that happening in any time in the near future. How'd that go for him? Was that good fun? <laughs> I think it was a very sad coffee. Jeez, yeah. that's hard yards. And so you, you, you obviously have come back to it. And yeah. because the theory would be then, when you're as gifted as you are, then it cannot be a fleeting thing, can it? it cannot, you, you know, you're not given that amount of gift. I guess so. Um, the tricky thing was that uh, the gift went away for a little bit. Or, you know, my head got in the way, more accurately, I think, is what happened. Um, and I, you know, I just needed some time off, I mm. think. And, you know... I, I got offered this tour in America, that which is called Lilith Fair, which is oh, the Sam McLaughlin yeah, yeah, yeah. female tour, which is, uh, you know, and I'd, I'd said to my manager, don't tell me about any shows, I don't want to know. But he said, I thought you might just want to know about this one because I know you're a big Sarah McLaughlin fan and all that kind of stuff. And I said, oh, gosh, yeah, I don't, I don't think I can say no to that. So I went over and I hadn't played for years at that stage and um, I did these shows and I suddenly just this... Uh, this love of music just kind of came rushing back and I just enjoyed the show so much and I just felt so grateful to to have that and and my fans um came to the shows in droves you know and they, they were all just like after the shows they were all asking me where I'd been and they were like we've been waiting so long for an album and and I suddenly felt this kind of almost like an obligation to this. I was people. going to say, did you feel bad about the fans in the, in, yeah, in the ensuing period? Yeah, I did. Period? I hadn't actually thought about that. It was it was um, a selfish thing, you know. It, it was um, I was very much inside my own head about it, and I just thought that no one would notice to tell you the truth. <laughs> <laughs> but they so this album is in Nashville, apart from anything else. Why? Um, I recorded it in Nashville because uh, at Lilith Fair I met Butterfly Boucher, who's Sarah McLaughlin's bass player, um, who's an Australian singer-songwriter who's been living in Nashville for years. And um, she told me about Nashville and said there's some great songwriters down there and really great music community. Um, you should come down and... Because um, so, the album's not country, is it? It's not, no, 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 it's not no. at all. People expect it to be when they hear it's made in Nashville. But, um, yeah, it's uh, it's... There's a huge scene in Nashville that's nothing to do with country music. It's just very creative and, you know, kind of sing a song, just very much based around mm. good songs. Were, good were songs. You, are you based in America now? You moved to America, didn't you, in the early part of your... Uh, you, for my second album, I moved yeah. to LA for, for a year to kind of release that over there, but I, no, Where are I've you now? just moved back to Melbourne. So you're still in Melbourne. I yeah. love Melbourne. Melbourne's fantastic. Yeah, did, when you went too. to uni, did you pass anything or did you just hang out and do nothing? I mean, did you sit some tests and get some qualifications? <laughs> yeah. and? Um, I didn't get any qualifications. I didn't go quite long enough to do that, but I, I did... Um, 
uh, Indigenous studies and, you know, yeah, I did e exams and essays and all And how's it stuff. on the campus? Because, I mean, it's one thing to go to uni, but, I mean, when you come back with you, first of all, you wouldn't need a student loan because you'd have a bit of coin from the from, <laughs> from the records. And, uh, but do people treat you okay? Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, the course I was doing, Indigenous Studies, there was a, a lot of really cool kids that, you know, and I can call them kids because I was officially a mature age student at that stage. And I think um, only 26, but I think that's the cutoff. Um, but yeah, so they were just really laid back. And I actually don't think most of them knew who I was. There, mm -hmm. was, a, like, there was a girl sitting next to me um, in a tutorial once who just kind of turned to me and said, you are Missy Higgins, right? I <laughs> just love quietly. It. And I said, yeah, I am. And she went, cool, okay. And then and just turned that. back to the front of the class. That's cool, yeah. eh? That's the so way that's it should it. be. Yeah. Now, so the music's flowing again, obviously. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm totally inspired and I'm so I'm so happy with this album. I, I collaborated with a lot of friends for it, so it's, it's just a really big kind of fun project. All right, what are you going to play for us? Uh, this is a song called Everyone's Waiting, and it's actually a, a song um, about that time that I was going through the writer's block and the expectation. Fantastic. Yeah. All right, here it is, Missy Higgins. I know all the lines to say the part I'm expected to play But in the reflection I am worlds away As I put my costume on Our lashes one by one Been doing this so long I could tie the knot behind my back and everyone's waiting and it's getting harder to hear what my heart is saying cause everyone's waiting Swallow and breathe, she says Remember this ain't for you, it's for them And all of those painful lessons you've had to learn You gotta use them now or never Cause everyone's waiting But it's getting harder to hear what my heart keeps saying Turn it off, I want to turn it all off
brilliant. Well done. Thank Wish you. you nothing but the best with the album. Lovely Thank to you see very you. Much. Take Cheers. care. Missy Higgins.